Residents to the east of a large bushfire burning about an hour out of Canberra have been told it's too late to leave their properties. Yeah. Yeah. China, China where a clean-up operation is underway. Climate change has been a quite common topic for years, but do we know specifically how this issue happens and how serious it impacts us? Looking at our situation at this moment of time, along with the pandemic that is still happening, does it affect climate change? More importantly, is just by being aware of the situation itself enough? Due to the long period of time, climate change that once started as a serious issue slowly become a joke for some people. Some said, if you meet a woman, start talking about global warming. It's a real icebreaker. Some even said, what did the one tornado say to the other? Let's do this again like we did last summer. Apart from all of this so-called hilarious goofiness, it's time to see with your own eyes that this climate change will not be reducing anytime soon. In fact, it has become a life and death situation. Even David King had once said, climate change is the most severe problem that we are facing today. More serious even than the threat of terrorism. Moreover, the pandemic that has started in 2019 also has become one of the contributors towards this matter. With all of this talking about climate change and so on, you must be scratching your own head and feeling baffled. How can climate change actually relate to the pandemic that we are facing? Is it capable of affecting our future? Well, it turns out the pandemic has contributed impacts on climate change in either way that can be positive or negative. At the start of the global pandemic, despite all the health or economic complications that we were facing, there seemed to be positive impacts on the environment. With more than 1 million coronavirus cases confirmed worldwide, lockdowns had been enforced in various countries and territories around the world. By April 2020, the whole world adopted the curfew or lockdown activity with restrictions on human mobility. More than 3.9 billion people in more than 90 countries have been asked or ordered to stay at home by their governments. The imposition of lockdowns leads to the unprecedented reduction of anthropogenic activities that have caused extreme harm to our environment through all the years. With regards to this, lockdown events help to decline in greenhouse gas emission that has become the main contributor towards air pollution. Despite all the positive impacts on nature that we are gaining, other pollutants began causing harm to the environment. Because of this dreadful virus, all of the people globally were required to wear personal protection equipment PPE, that has become almost a must for every single frontliners to wear. Throughout the year, PPEs have been used with no slowing in sight which causes mass pollution. How can these equipments cause pollution? Most PPE is made up of non-woven synthetic polymers such as polyethylene, polypropylene, polyethylene terphthalate, all of which contain plastic. I'm sure every single one of us is aware of what plastics can do to our environment. Such plastics take hundreds or maybe thousands of years to decompose, which can certainly lead to all we know, land or perhaps water pollution. Do you also know that during the pandemic, there has also been an increase in the usage of single-use plastics worldwide? With the fear of contamination, lots of shops or institutions refuse to use reusable materials. Not to forget, even several US states have stopped recycling programs. You must be wondering, why? Is putting a pause in recycling programs really necessary? The pandemic has become the global utmost priority. So, in order to prevent virus outbreaks, it is necessary due to the concern that the reusable materials have not been sanitized and handled properly. A pause in these programs could potentially harm the global momentum towards better recycling programs that maybe could help prevent climate change better. It would act as a reset button for all of us. This is when people's awareness comes in handy in order to help to decline climate change. Individuals with awareness about this issue know what will happen to us if this climate change keeps on going even during the pandemic. Those who are aware are not heavily depend on nature-based programs such as recycling programs, Plastic Free July, World Car Free Day, all of which could contribute to the reduction of climate change. Easy to say when you are aware of a situation and you know that it will cause harm to you, what will you do then? I am certainly sure that you will do whatever you can to prevent it. Without any exception, this also applies to climate change. When someone is fully conscious of all the negative effects that are caused by the climate crisis, the awareness itself will drive oneself to prevent the issue with their own will. Other than that, we are also strongly convinced that this pandemic can be a good preview for what is to come in the future. 
I am sure a lot of people there are making a fuss about how this pandemic has affected every single one of us, no matter what, in terms of economic, health, social and even environment. But what if you throw those negative thoughts away for once? Look at the brighter side of it. What have we learned from the pandemic? What are the lessons that we have gained because of this pandemic? Ladies and gentlemen, when we think of it, yes, there are certainly some implications from this pandemic. This pandemic has taught us to be innovative and adapt to change. How? Isn't it related to robots and technology stuff? Well, innovation holds a very wide meaning. Innovation is the creation, development and implementation of a new thing with the aim of improving efficiency and effectiveness. In this case, governments have discovered ways in order to avoid COVID-19 outbursts by enforcing lockdowns. Other than that, the new norm of wearing masks every time we go out is also an innovative way for us to prevent the virus. During the pandemic, these are the changes that were required for us to adapt in order to avoid any outbreaks that are caused by this virus. Believe it or not, these criteria can actually help us to face the climate crisis that day by day has not showing any signs of stopping. If we are aware of what climate change holds for us, we will notice the similarities between the pandemic and the crisis. Into the bargain, we can actually turn the tragedy of COVID-19 into a blueprint in order to avoid climate change. Like one stated before, just like how we face the pandemic, those who are aware will take it as an implementation, be innovative and apply it to the climate crisis. We believe that our world can salvage a huge opportunity from this crisis that is only possible though if we do not attempt to rebuild the old normal with all the free structures of the past. Instead, we have to turn the post-pandemic recovery into a reset and make it the blueprint for a sustainable future. This pandemic is a wake-up call to stay within our planet's limits. Over the last two decades, experts have been warning that biodiversity loss and the disruption of ecosystems can create conditions for new viruses and diseases to emerge. Global temperature rise alters the timing, geography and intensity of disease around the world and could help to facilitate the rise of new disease outbreaks like COVID-19. The Earth is a living organism. It can also respond to signal and input much like humans. But now, it seems like the planet is telling us that it needs rest. Based on a survey that we had done to assess the degree of awareness among Sekolah Menengah Sains Tapan residents, we had come across that the majority of them are sensible and aware of this crisis. But the real question is, how do we maintain this momentum of awareness for the sake of a better future? We need more people talking about climate change more often because we need to break out of the current climate echo chamber. Our primary task is not to tell people climate change is happening or to make them worry about it. They already know and they are already concerned. Earth Day is meant to be spent celebrating the planet's clean natural resources. In recent years, the day has been used to raise awareness about global climate change. Nature is in crisis, threatened by biodiversity and habitat loss, global heating and toxic pollution. Failure to act is failing humanity. Addressing the current pandemic and protecting ourselves against future global threats requires some management of hazardous medical and chemical waste, strong and global stewardship of nature and biodiversity, and a clear commitment to building back better, creating green jobs and facilitating the transition to carbon neutral economies. Humanity depends on action now for a resilient and sustainable future. Now is the right time to demonstrate solidarity. Take action so that a clear message could be sent to the world leaders to act on climate change, halt biodiversity and habitat loss, and make certain environmental protection is a fundamental foundation of building back better. By now, I'm sure most of us are sensible and most likely to be aware of this issue. At this moment in time, climate change is already creating a never-ending story to the natural disasters that occur around us globally. Research and data has also been done in order to substantiate this statement. Put aside all the research, even we ourselves know and are conscious of the change that is happening in our surroundings. No matter where we heard about it, news, radios, or even social media, lots of natural disasters have been reported due to climate change itself. So, what are we waiting for? There is no way for us to be sitting in the comfort of our bed, eating chips, while at the same time, we know our earth is sickening, yet we decided to do nothing and ignore this matter. Our team believes that all human beings from all walks of life should participate in taking actions to preserve our earth, just like how the COVID-19 crisis had taught us. 
be innovative and adapt to change. Say no more to only being dependent on governments or organizations waiting for them to take action while we ourselves can actually prevent this issue even with the smallest action. Like a great woman named Susan Cooper once said, in the end, all it takes is one small action by one person, one at a time.